Hello friends, and we are back with a topic that I think is going to be pretty interesting for a lot of people. So last time we talked, I was trying to build an automatic swim trainer. Uh, don't worry about that because it has evolved into a whole thing, and I realize this can be a really good discussion about mechanics, how to build engines. So long story short, I was trying to build a minecart that would automatically run a circuit using powered rollers such that this aquifer... Uh, I already realized as I'm saying this, this is way too complicated... Uh, let me start uh, simpler. Okay, so last time we had an, an aquifer, and that's something that generates water um, from stone kind of automatically and slowly. And so I said, oh, so my dwarves, you know, might need to know how to swim. So as my first mega project, let me um, build an automatic swim trainer. And that's what you're looking at here. So it's a mine, it's a mine cart that the dwarves can sit in mine carts and ride them around on circuits. And that little, that little, um, on the left, the thing that kind of looked like a swimming pool that was emptied out is, spoiler alert, that is, that's exactly what it is. Um, and sorry, I, when I took this video, I think I was also showing, uh, the start of an outdoor tower. That's what we're looking at now. Um, which, you know, I'm a little proud of. So the three challenges that I took from last video were Dwarven Disco Ball and, uh, Big Tower and a Swim Trainer. And they're all going poorly, actually. I'm struggling with each one. But this is me experimenting with how to just build kind of straight up. Um, and, you know, if, if I've given people the impression that I was, like, really good at all aspects of Dwarf Fortress, I'm not. But this swim trainer actually taught me something that I had been avoiding learning for years. And it is actually very simple. It's like, I, I should have learned this years ago, but how to build complicated machines. In one of your menus, there's a thing called, like, uh, mechanisms and fluids. And I would peek in there for, like, I would need water pumps every once in a while, or I would need, like, what else would I use? Levers are really important. Uh, most players will go in that menu for levers and for, uh, like, screw pumps. But I was finally like, I'm going to learn how axles and gearboxes work. And spoiler, it's really, really easy. It's just like Lego. Um, and it took a lot of figuring out. So, okay, back to this swim trainer. Um, this So here, here we're back at the swim trainer. Great. And then I think the rest of this footage is all me... Uh, troubleshooting the swim trainer, and I almost have it working now. Um, so the issue uh, that I realized too late had an easier solution, the issue is that when dwarves were going into the pool, especially with water in it, they would slow down and the minecart would be stuck at the bottom of this pool and the dwarf would have to, like, you know, panic swim out. So the idea being that they pass through this water and are exposed to deep water, but they're still safely in a minecart that then pulls them back out of the water so nobody drowns. So it's, it's like, it's just kind of like learning to swim by dunking your face underwater over and over again. But mine was failing catastrophically in that it was, it was actually trapping these dwarves that were trying to learn how to swim uh, in a sink or swim situation. So I was really struggling. A big issue with it was that this aquifer um, is, not as, is not as good as a river in terms of water pressure and water source, of course. You know, people think of aquifers like uh, scary because it'll flood your... Uh, mine, and that's true, but for me, it's that it doesn't produce fish, and it's too slow. Like, I feel like a scarcity of water on this map because there's no river, and I we haven't hit the caverns yet, so it's like, it's really just for the waterfall I want to power. For this, so for this swim trainer, I w my idea, originally, my bad idea that taught me mechanics was to use rollers. How So here's how rollers work. Rollers will take your mine uh, cart which is already moving under gravity or with a dwarf pushing it, um, and it'll carry that minecart along. So my idea was, and I'm laughing looking back now, the things we learned. I put, I was, my idea was to put the rollers on the bottom of the pool. So like when the minecart settled there, it would be pushed back up. Um, and that proved really hard because I ended up flooding my mechanisms and I lost more water pressure, and water pressure is already really scarce. You can see what we're looking at here is um, my well for the dwarves, and that feeds into the swimming trainer. And then, oh yeah, I had a save glitch as I did that. Um, and then that feeds actually out to a water wheel, which was supposed to power the rollers. So the idea being, if I had a river, I could have done it. But these aquifer doesn't give me enough water pressure to work with. Uh, and it, it really was a struggle. This, this footage is all from me just experimenting with different things. I also didn't know how, I did not know how water wheels worked. I had to figure this out. And let me, okay, let me be the one. And timestamp, uh, let me, I'm going to write this down, 442 or so is uh, right for the, uh, the water wheels, because that's what you want to hear. Okay, water wheels are kind of hard to figure out based on just reading from the wiki, but here's how they work, as best I can describe it. You need three s squares 
clear in a row. And the water wheel needs to be hanging in the air above at least three, level three of water on the level underneath that. Now, let me try to explain it again, because this is the struggle I had trying to read about this myself, is nobody explains it quite clearly, and there is a way. There is a way to be very precise about this. So what you want to do is horizontal axles and vertical axles uh, move power uh, Z and Y levels. And uh, sorry, I'm going to, after this, I'm going to explain uh, how axles work. Man, it really is hard to explain. Um, but the water wheel needs to hang via a horizontal axle in the air. So in open air, no floor between it, no anything. Open air above water that is flowing past consistently such that the three squares on the Z level underneath the water wheel. So you you place the water wheel, now go down one Z level. That needs to be showing like consistent water flowing in one direction past it. And I think like maybe it, it only starts when it's like consistently like at three or four or something like that. I don't think one will trigger it. Okay, maybe, I hope that made sense. Um, I'm like getting frustrated trying to describe it, but it's actually not that hard. And once you play with it like I did, you'll, you'll see what it means. It's, yeah, it's just, you place the water wheel in a channel. That's another way to say it. That's another way that people were trying to describe it. So, you know, a channel goes down one Z level. So the water wheel goes in the pocket of the upper Z level. And then the water needs to be flowing directly underneath it with nothing between them. And that'll power a water wheel. And then from there, okay, now let me explain let me get a let me get a sip here. Sorry, I'm, I, I gotta calm down. And it was just as fun to figure out. Um, uh, so, oh, and then I'm gonna describe uh, mine stops too because that's also something I had to learn. Okay, so the X axles can be built and extended. You just need mechanisms and wood, I think, um, or maybe just wood. But you you build it from the mechanisms menu, uh, the me- mechanics and fluids. And you can make an x-axis line as far as you want. And it's like a power line. Imagine it like it's just conducting power. If you have trouble visualizing how like an axle actually works. Um, it's a lot about like rotational motion. All you need to know is that it is like, it's like Legos, Legos where you have to do orthogonal connections. And there are things called gearboxes. You can move power from windmills, from water mills. You can move it anywhere you want on the map. All you have to do is build a like... Like, or building train tracks, if that's more helpful. Like, you know, when you were a kid and you had the puzzle pieces that would fit together like train tracks. You're just doing a point from point A to point B through X, Y, and Z space. And you can do that with just vertical axles, horizontal axles, and gearboxes. Um, And the trick with vertical axles that I had trouble figuring out, this is me troubleshooting again and then realizing this eventually... Oh man, I can't believe, I can't believe I almost got it working. This really was a me- mega project. This, this drew me in. This is why it's good to do mega projects because it'll force you to learn things um, and realize things about the game. But so where was I? So, okay, so let me, tr- let me use what we're looking at as an example. And it might be confusing when you're looking now because I moved these axles a lot as I tested them. But what we end up having is from the swimming pool and from the aquifer, both have drains, uh, drain sites that drain through a water ma- a water wheel, which after I get it operational, then moves up the refusee levels via um, again. So so gearboxes can be connectors between Z levels or between uh, X and Y. So you're gonna have like a power source right there. You can see uh, out of the water wheel, there's one straight line. It goes to a gearbox and then up to a gearbox and then down to a gearbox and then at each of those gearboxes, I could also put a vertical one. As long as there's no floor, there's nothing, if there's clear air overhead, then I can place a vertical axle on that, on that gearbox, basically, but up one Z level. So not on this Z level. That's where it gets tricky. So above this gearbox, up one elevation level, that's where you place the vertical rod in, basically in midair, in an open air square, uh, and then it will work. And that's what I was having trouble with. But so I end up doing that. I end up using the axles and gearboxes, like you can see right there. And I do end up connecting it and getting the water wheel to just barely power it. And you'll see proof proof of concept by the end of this video, which is actually 20 minutes long. I might have to record this, this one in pieces, um, the commentary, but uh, where was I? Oh, so we do end up powering the rollers. Hallelujah, hall- you know, like we, fi- we did it. It was this huge Herculean effort. And then I was just, uh, what inspired me to actually start recording this video is I realized all this time, I didn't have to learn any of this mechanic stuff at all. I um, I could have just 
done like a roller coaster design, I could have gone up more Z levels, have the dwarves push the minecarts physically up themselves to build that potential, uh, potential energy, and then ride in the minecart, roll down, and just do like a splash zone, like a water park uh, swimming pool at the end. And then, you know, the dwarves could physically carry these th- uh, minecarts back and reset them. Uh, I got so fixated on making it an automatic, just like, um, like a cyclotron, that dwarves would just constantly be training swimming, that I actually almost achieved it, and I, I'm pretty sure I can do it. it the main thing is going to be water pressure. Um, the aquifer here does not support the kind of water pressure I need. And the fact that I had to mess with these mechanisms a lot means that there's a lot of, like, dead-end tunnels and little inefficient ways that I've now carved the waterways. So I'm almost tempted, I almost want to do this on a different map, on a new map, uh, with a healthy river, because that would make everything so much easier. And I feel like I could just do it like that now. I know exactly how to do it. Um, But I'll stick with this one, and I'll report back. Uh, I'm a man of my word. I said I was going to do mega projects, and I'm right back here with all three, actually. So all three are going poorly, but are almost functional. So my disco ball um, is going to be small, but... I'm working on that. And, and the towers, well, really, I've been focused on this one because this was the engineering one. Um, oh, so I was going to talk about minecart, um, how minecarts work. So uh, sh- capital H, shift H, is, um, opens the hauling minecart menu. And those kind of snap together just like the axles do. Um, I actually haven't practiced yet moving them up and down Z levels. I assume, you know, you achieve that with ramps, uh, but I haven't practiced to see if it's actually challenging in any specific ways. I know that carts can derail if you go too fast and stuff, but I really need to practice with them more. Um, But so you, yeah, you just kind of click them together. You can carve it straight into, it doesn't even have to be smooth stone. Dwarves will just, from the engraving menu, they'll just carve tracks. Um, And then you have to forge, make a mine cart. And then from the shift H menu, you, Assign it, I think, we'll go through these menus, um, and let me see in the video. Uh, maybe it's coming up, but you'll see in here, I'll open a menu and I'll be clicking around and setting something uh, in like a, in a GUI display, and it says like, um, it says like, when do dwarves move this card? Do dwarves ride, or do they um, push, or do they kick it? Like, do they just, like, give it a push to, like, down a hill or something? Man, I really should have done a roller coaster. It would be so much easier. A roller coaster splash zone swim training instead of this fully automatic one. But, uh, okay, I'll have the nice one. Um, but so, yeah, so what you have to do is you assign it a minecart, and then you assign it stop points that it moves between. And then in those stop points, you set whether it waits for cargo, how much cargo, uh, whether it it's associated with stockpiles. I haven't even looked into that yet. I'm really just trying to use them as vehicles right now. But you set all that. And then, so if you want to set up a swim trainer like this, what you end up doing is, um, and you won't find this on the wiki for the, um, that's kind of the fun of these um, stupid dwarf trick. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm drinking a soda water. These stupid dwarf trick uh, mega projects uh, is that if kind of, you learn about it from the wiki and then you have to Google stuff to figure it out. And then you learn about the game. So I definitely recommend these. But so one of the things I learned, and I'll tell you for free, is that did I get so far that I forgot it? Um, Minecarts. Oh, okay. So if you want to just use them like vehicles for the swim trainer, the way you do that is you set, um, as, as far as I can figure out, you set a stop point, you know, at the end of the circuit, start point, like kind of midway through to encourage them to go through the whole circuit. Um, and then you have to go in and say, dwarves will move this cart at 0% full. Uh, and then remember to click the, there's a little image that will either show them riding, kicking, or pushing. And you set that. So you can click click it in so it says riding, um, and basically don't worry about actually moving something useful, you know, like from a stockpile or something. And then any dwarves with hauling, as soon as they see that cart, they'll just hop in and ride it. So I, I think you'll see in this video at certain points, um, I'll test it, and the dwarves will, as soon as I enable it, the, dwar- the closest dwarf will like, just hop in the minecart, and ride it around the track, and it's going fine until it, but it always gets stuck at the bottom of that pool. And I could have just made it a splash zone roller coaster. So just after that, after that seltzer break, I'm back. All right. So one thing I do want to mention is in the top, uh, should be, we might be out of sync at this point, especially as I click around, but just north of that whole monstrosity, the, the swimming pool and the water wheel there, you can see a farm. And I th- by the end of this video, you'll see it populate and depopulate with uh, people planting and then just collecting, you know, uh, a good harvest. 
And that's one of the nice things about, uh, one of the things I discovered that's kind of nice about experimenting with an aquifer, for example. This one, I never, you know, I never messed around with like mirthful or evil environments. I tried them, but um, it really is just like a different flavor of play and aquifers are the same thing. And um, it, yeah, it forces you to learn by playing it a little differently. And that is really cool. So like my, my point there being that the first uh, map I showed everyone was the sand plain and you could not grow anything on the surface because it was all sand. The grass that was, um, the grass that was there would just immediately, as soon as someone stepped on it, go away. And, um, even below ground, it was pretty sandy, but this one actually has good earth. And so like that little floodplain, it was, it was just a wasted room in some phase of this development, but because it was so nicely, it had been irrigated basically by this testing, uh, it's a super, super profitable um, little underground farm now that I just maintained. And I've actually, you know, because this has actually gone through a few drafts, uh, the water, yeah, totally filled that room and then fl and then was gone. And then now it doesn't even flood over it again because that will eventually destroy your farm if, you know, it gets flooded. Um, it, it'll tolerate, like, a little bit of sprinkle, like, from a waterfall or something, but eventually um, the game will call it and be like, okay, no, this is no longer a field plot because... Sorry, I thought my seltzer break was over. Um, they'll say this is no longer a field plot, uh, and, you know, just destroy it for you. But this one now, so that, that doesn't happen in this case. Um, and so my point being that I kind of learned, like, rooms as they became flooded or dry, as I interacted with these aquifers, there became a lot of, like, intertidal, almost, like, zones. Like, like, this water was flowing in and out, and that was making for useful rooms. So I don't know, this game is really beautiful. There's a lot of, like artistic stuff like that. And you'll see in comments and stuff, like people will say something that nobody else ever thought of, or, you know, noticed. Um, it's just the depth of this. Oh, I, if I haven't coined this, this is important because I've been describing it to friends like this for a while. Um, it is like Dwarf Fortress is a fantasy generation engine and it is the best fantasy generation engine on the market. Um, and playing it, Steam made it more more like a game, you know, it is a game, but Steam made it more obviously game-like to the average person, but I've always kind of felt like this is a infinite fantasy world uh, generation engine, and it's a master masterwork of that, um, but like we as the players are kind of learning a programming language. Like we're kind of creating our own games in this engine. That's almost what it feels like sometimes, uh, and more so even before, you know, the Steam update made everything more obviously like, you know, like a video game. I don't know. I've always felt that way, you know, the devs and the, um, the, you know, there's a team of like people who are fans who fell in love with this game and, and then, and now they help code it. Um, I don't know. It's a beautiful thing. Now I'm just waxing philosophical. So, uh, I'll let you go. Thank you guys for joining me. I hope some of that was helpful. We covered a lot. We covered a lot in this 20 minutes. Um, so leave, leave questions. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. But yeah, leave it in the comments if there's anything that I explained and I touched on and you were like, oh, that was, I almost, that was almost helpful for me to understand something, but you would like more explanation. Uh, I'd be happy to do that. And I'm always looking for ideas for new videos. So, uh, yep, I'll catch everybody next time.